Hi, we're back here with the Reverend Dr. <laughs> Jerry Kasberg, uh, our senior pastor here at Bethel, and we're looking at Mark chapter 12. And now we are just on a on a fast pace trip to the cross uh, right now. So you just got done with uh, Mark 11, which, which dealt with the triumphal entry, Palm Sunday, and now we're in that week. We're in that seven day span, starting with Palm Sunday, that's gonna lead us through the death, and then of course, then the resurrection, then on the, the next week. So uh, lots of stuff that is happening here, uh, and true to Mark fashion, it, it's coming quick, and it's coming powerful. So, um, Jerry, if you look at Mark 12, what are some things that you saw here that were interesting in the summary of the chapter? Well, in this last week of his life, of, of course, the religious leaders are trying to trap him. They've tried ever since day one, uh, from when he was questioned of healing the paralytic mm -hmm. in, in Mark chapter 2, uh, all the way up now in this last week, just more intense, trying to to uh, get folks just to be angry with him. And, and the goal is to get rid of him. Mm -hmm. And so this chapter is, uh, is all about controversies, but it ends in a great blessing. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I love that part. But, you know, it starts out with the parable of the tenants. And the idea, it really is, a, a Jesus is speaking against the religious leaders who wanted the ownership of uh, of the vineyard and wanted to do away with uh, the owner and the owner's son and because they wanted it all to themselves. And of course, the religious leaders had an idea of who Jesus was talking about, so it just made them more mad, but it, uh, it, it really- That time does they have anything to lose. <laughs> set the tone Point. Of, of just clarifying that uh, they're out for themselves and for their own earthly kingdom. And I think it's a, it's a great challenge to pastors today. Uh, this is my church, my congregation. And what we're doing here instead of, no, we're representing the king in the kingdom of God. And this is one of his expressions on the corner of Reed and Bethel Road. And yeah, so there's the parable of the vine growers. There is, um, after that, we get into um, this idea of rendering under Caesar what is Caesar's. And um, talk a little bit about that. Well, it's an, it's an interesting place. Again, all of these controversies, they're trying to trap Jesus. They are not interested, and I'll show you why. In this uh, uh, question about should we pay taxes or not, they knew if they said, yeah, pay taxes, the people would be mad. And if he said, don't pay taxes, the government would be mad. Right. And this is really uh, comes down to, uh, to your uh, civic responsibility in some ways. Uh, we go back to where the people were taken captive to Babylon. They were given instructions, build homes, uh, have businesses, contribute to the well-being of the city while you are there. And that's a great challenge for us. We are part of what God is doing here. I love, you know, going to Augustine in the city of God. We're to make this the most like heaven that we can. We do it with our businesses. So we are part of a community and part of a culture. Um, Jesus gets out of the controversy by asking for a coin and asking whose picture is on it. And of course, it's Caesar's. And he says, well, he doesn't answer the question about taxes, but he does say, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Whose image is on the coin? And what I, he does two things. He, he embarrasses the, the people asking the questions because they have the coins mm. in their pockets. And so they have taken the image of Caesar into the temple, which goes against the commandments, mm -hmm. but they were part of the system they were asking about. Mm -hmm. and, and I think the second thing, and you're gonna hear this on Sunday morning as well, um, the, the whole idea that uh, giving unto Caesar because his image is on the coin, that who, whatever image is on the item, they belong to the one who made it. Mm -hmm. We are made in the image of God. Jesus is actually helping us to understand we don't live in two worlds. Mm -hmm. we, there's not a sacred and a secular. 
everything is sacred because God's image is on everything. So that's a freebie you get ahead of time. A little freebie. <laughs> Although I think we all would, would love it if, if Jesus here said, don't ever pay taxes ever again. I mean, that's fantastic. No, and just, we'd all be in jail. We all, so that would be good too. <laughs> that's true. Community that's true. We're not, we're not in a government that exactly <laughs> follows what, what's, what's written in here. There's also stuff in this chapter. Uh, they ask him, this is the, the greatest uh, uh, question of what is the best commandment, the, the, the most important commandment. And Jesus lays that down and tells them that um, the first foremost is here, Israel, the Lord your God is one. And that is a callback. To, uh, to Deuteronomy, it's a call back to the Torah. Everyone should be picking up on that uh, as he's speaking it. Uh, and you shall know, love your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. And then the second he follows up with, you shall love your neighbor as yourself and there's no other commandment greater than these two. Uh, in other gospels it says that all the law is summed up in these two. Uh, do you want to talk about that, about the importance of... Well, those? yes, what Jesus does is that he... Uh, he, he takes that verse out of Deuteronomy that every Jewish person would say in, in the morning and at night in their prayers. Written on the doorpost, too. It, 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 yes. Supposedly. And then he takes this other phrase out of uh, Leviticus and he joins them together as one. Hmm. And, and so he, he, he said, this is the most important. And, and that idea of loving others as you love yourself because he knows we are people who love ourselves. And so to bring uh, others into that same level of love is, uh, um, well, it's, it's just unknown. It's, we don't typically do that. Mm -hmm. and, and so the other thing that's interesting is he adds the word mind there mm -hmm. that is not in the other gospels. Now with Mark being first, the others took mind out Mm -hmm. And so it'd be interesting to know why. Yeah. What Jerry, Mark, we, we, we think, we, we're pretty sure that Mark was the gospel written first and that Matthew and Luke took from Mark in terms of, of pacing in there. And, and, and we know that from the content because what's in there, what's in Mark and then what's in the others. And there's a, another gospel that they haven't found called Q mm -hmm. that uh, because there's so much material that's so alike um, it's interesting. So it's always interesting to, to see what the others either put in or took out right. that as they were addressing their own audience. doesn't mean that it's not true or real. It just means that it's addressing a particular audience. Mm. Excellent. And then the last, uh, Jerry talked about it. He said that the, we have all this controversy and this back and forth here that starts this chapter and then we end with this scene of, of, of great grace and um, um, it's just a great story. It's called the uh, the widow's mite or the widow's offering. Um, go ahead and, and you can do it better than I. <laughs> well, Jesus is uh, catches this woman putting you know as folks lined up to put their offerings in one this widow who took all she had two mites and if you've ever seen a widow's mite it is just a tiny tiny sliver. Of, of silver and she put it in and, and it was all she had and he had to stop. He, he, he got the disciples and said, look, she has done more. She's given more than any of these others that are dropping in huge bags of, of resources and uh, because she gave out of her poverty and what a great challenge for us. But he, uh, you know, he, he saw her heart and, and heard this as he stood across the courtyard and it, it, he just had to bring their attention to it and they remembered it. And, and if you go back in this chapter when we talked about loving God and loving others, he would have us do that than all the burnt offerings and, and sacrifices we can make. And so as amazing as it was for her to put all her wealth in that, What's even more amazing is how we love God and love each other. Right. Any difficult teachings in here that, that um, might stumble us, may challenge us? Well, the difficult teaching is the widow's might. <laughs> yes, <that's> and, <laughs> and all of the, the parable of the tenets of, you know, all of that. There's in here uh, uh, about, 
you know, do religious people go around wearing robes and looking spiritual? And, you know, how, how do we carry, our, carry ourselves? You know, we, we follow God who washed feet. Um, uh, one that loves heaven's throne to become like us. We, it's, a, it's about not climbing the ladder, but it's how to get to the lowest rung and honor God and be glad that we're there, that we might lift others up. I mean, it's all, that, that's the hard teaching. And then uh, any teachings that would uh, grip us, that just warm your heart. How about the widow's mite? How about the, <laughs> how about, how about the widow's mite? Here's, I mean, the, here's the thing, we folks. Do. We do have a bit of a script that we follow, but when you get two pastors sitting next to each other, I mean, no, it's, the script goes out the window. It's, it's <laughs> an idea. I mean, that's, um, you know, I can be self-centered. I can want to be looked at well. You know, I can... Uh, want to put me first I mean it is it is I can want to test Jesus mm -hmm. I mean it's it's all it's all convicting yeah yeah wanting to test Jesus I, I, I think the thing that why that grips me is that that I could be guilty of it I think we all can be guilty of it in terms of um, when we're in some of our, our darkest times or in our greatest need and and we foolishly think you know if you would do this then I'll proclaim your name kind of thing. And I think of, uh, in scriptures, in La you know, Lazarus with uh, Mary and, and Martha, if you would have come, if you would have been here. And there's, you know, there's just more going on um, than our, That's a good Jesus word. is not a vending machine. We don't put in and say, okay, you get what we get. You know, there's, there's, there's more there. And then last, uh, how does this challenge us to walk in his ways, which we've, we've kind of talked about, maybe the widow's might. Um, <laughs> <laughs> It's such a great story. Yes. <laughs> it is such a great story. Um, I, I, you know, I would just echo those things that I've shared um, to love God and to to really love others. That's that's the key. Mm -hmm. Better than any sacrifice, any offering, is that we would walk in His ways that way. Well, thank you, and thank you, everybody, for uh, playing along with us as we go through here in, in Chapter 12. Uh, Jerry's going to be with us for uh, the last uh, chapters, which will actually double up. 15 and 16 we'll, we'll talk about together in just a few weeks. So uh, look forward to that, and I hope you all have a wonderful uh, evening, daytime, whenever you all are meeting, uh, talking about Mark Chapter 12. Thank and thanks you. for putting these together. Oh, thanks. He's going to thank me again at the last chapter. <laughs> It'll just be a season of thanks. But have a great night, everyone. Thank you.